So as promised, I'm going to walk you through how to install the Mad Max plotter fork for Windows, which is called Fury Road. There's obviously some caveats here uh, that I would like to mention in the beginning of this video, which are this is a fork of the Mad Max plotter. So this is not from the developer of Mad Max. Someone forked the source code and ported it to Windows. So the trustworthiness of this software is still uh, kind of to be determined. I've only been using the Linux version, but um, from what I've heard, people have been having success with the software. And since you don't have to have your private keys uh, to use this software, it really kind of mitigates some of the risks. You could run it on a machine that you're just plotting with that doesn't have Chia software installed or anything like that. I personally don't have any gripes against it at the moment. I haven't heard anything negative. I think the Mad Max software itself is probably objectively more trustworthy than this software, but that said, uh, I have not heard anything negative and it doesn't really appear that there's any problems with this software. So let's get right into it. The first thing you'll need to do is go to the GitHub page. There's a link in the video description, and this is the fork of the Mad Max plotting software. This is called uh, Fury Road, which is kind of perfect, I think. And you're going to want to download the miscellaneous.zip file. So you'll go ahead and click download on that. And once it's done downloading, you'll want to extract the zip. And once you're done extracting it, you're going to want to move the folder that you extracted to your desktop or somewhere that you can access it easily. Once it's moved there, you can actually take the two scripts in our video description. They're just PowerShell files and shout out to Bosniak for throwing that together for me since I was working on the video last night. I didn't really have time to do that. But these are really kind of basic PowerShell scripts. There's two of them. Um, and so the first script will create a loop of the plotter itself. And you can see the variables here. This variable specifically will loop it 10 times before it stops. And the rest of it's just the standard um, Mad Max plotter command line syntax. So there's your first public key, your second public key, the number of threads you want to use, and the buckets at the end. So save these two PowerShell files if you want to script this all out. Next, you'll want to download the Microsoft C++ redistributable package. This is to run the software. This is from Microsoft, and there's a link in the video description on how to get it. After you download it, you'll just install it. It's a setup wizard. It's fairly straightforward. Make sure you download it from Microsoft and you don't obtain this file from someone else because you could get a malicious installer that is not what you're looking for. So use the link in the video description. After you're done installing the Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable 14.0.23026 software, um, then you can actually go and test out the plotter. As I mentioned earlier, these are the variables. The first part is calling on the executable chia underscore plot.exe. The second variable is the pool public key. And the third variable is your farmer public key. And then the next variable is your temp1 directory. The variable after that is your temp2 directory. So remember in the description from the creator of this software, Temp1 is used for roughly 25% of your writes, and Temp2 is used for 75% of your writes. So ideally, Temp2 would be RAM, but if it's not memory, then you would probably want to use something with higher endurance, or you could kind of copy what I've been doing and just run SAS 10K drives as Temp1 and Temp2. The next variable is the number of threads you, can, you want to dedicate to this. So if you look up the ARC page for your processor, if it's an Intel processor, or obviously go to AMD's website to figure out how many threads your AMD processor has, you can determine how many threads you should set this to. If you want to run one job against two drives or one drive or memory, then you can max this out and set it to the maximum number of threads you have to get the most performance. If you want to run two jobs in parallel, you probably want to cut that number in half. And so fine tuning here is required, obviously. 
The next setting is buckets. Seven is probably the default setting for most of us. And after that, you're off to the races. Um, if you want to script this out, you can just use the PowerShell commands that are in the video description, copy paste them. There's nothing malicious in them. They're just straightforward. You can see what it's doing. Um, if you want to join our Discord, please come and join. There's lots of helpful people in there. And I try to help people out as much as I can as well when I'm not trying to make videos. So please come and join. Editor Alex here. Um, I realized after making the video that I kind of left out an important part, which is if you want to run these PowerShell files, you're going to have to set your execution policy in PowerShell to accept remote signed scripts. So you can do that with this command here. You have to open up a PowerShell command prompt as an administrator. You do that by right clicking on PowerShell and open run as administrator. After you hit return, you'll have to hit yes to set the execution policy. Once that's done, you can run these scripts uh, by saving them as .ps1 files. You can just open notepad, paste the video description for each of the scripts, the mover and the plotter. The mover obviously just moves the file from source to destination. You just have to change the drive letters and the plotter obviously loops plots. And then after you save the files, you can launch them from uh, the PowerShell window or you can double click them and run them as in PowerShell. One of the other things that I left out in the video that I think is probably going to change fairly soon is the Windows version seems to be one generation behind the Linux version. And so while I'm making a Linux version video next, the I would guess that the command flags themselves will change. So right now you don't have to put flags in for the command, but the syntax of the command will probably change and look more like the Linux version in the next coming days or week at the most. This is kind of being updated in real time. So to run this command in Windows in the future, you'll probably have to use this as a key here. So you can see the commands are the same, but there's flags that have to be added before the variables um, and while this isn't true today for Windows, it will likely be true in the coming future. So this is kind of the key on how to do it. This is what the command looks like. Um, should you have to do this because the Windows version gets updated? I wanted to make this video real quick and brief. I really kind of hate it when YouTubers make long intros and ramble on and on, which I feel like I'm doing now. So thank you for your time. Bye.